When you have a ton of ideas, cutting design time in half actually sounds like a dream. And honestly, with the AI tools I'm about to show you, it's becoming reality. Today, we're talking about AI tools for designers, and I'm specifically focusing on a set that actually makes sense for us. Not the overhyped stuff, not the tools that leave you with virtually nothing left to do, but the ones that actually make sense for how we work. We'll look at some standalone gems that'll save you from scrolling through endless options, some features and apps you may already be using, and some tools under a subscription you might already have. So let's start with the tools that you probably already have access to. If you use Adobe, which I'm sure a lot of you do, they have been adding a ton of AI features that may be helpful to your workflow. My personal favorite out of the bunch might be the vector recoloring in Photoshop and Illustrator because previously manually changing colors throughout an entire design was so tedious and now it's just not. Previously, recoloring that would have potentially taken me an hour now takes me about five minutes. The best part is the color relationships stay intact and that usually gave me a headache when doing it manually. Another game changer in Illustrator is the AI Power Rotate tool. This isn't just your standard rotation, it actually understands the context of what you're rotating and can suggest optimal angles based on your design composition. What's really clever about it is how it recognizes when you're working with text, logos, or geometric shapes and adjusts the rotation suggestions accordingly. So instead of eyeballing angles and doing the math yourself, it gives you smart snap points that just feel right. It's one of those features that seems small but saves you those annoying micro adjustments that eat up time. Now, of course, if you're working with images, there have been a lot of AI tools developed to help generate and edit photos to create your best work. Envato now has a full AI stack that you should definitely have in your kit. For designers who are looking to generate images to assist in their final product, ImageGen will be helpful. This is pretty straightforward. You type what you need and it generates images that you can actually use commercially. When you need a quick background change or you're stuck on a concept, this delivers. What I really love about Imogen is that it recognizes those who are not the best at prompting, myself included. You can try your best attempt and have your prompt improve with a click of a button. From here, you can pull your image into the program of your choice to continue creating. And then there's Image Edit, which now features Google's Nano Banana. You know when you have that perfect photo and there's just one thing in it that needs to go immediately? Instead of diving deep into another program, you can quickly handle that in browser, which is how I prefer to work when I'm already in the browser sourcing assets. The thing I appreciate about both of these is that they're not trying to replace your creative process, they're just removing those little friction points that slow you down. And of course, if you're already accessing Envato's creative subscription, these are just a part of what you're getting at no extra cost. For my Figma users, the auto layout improvements are solid, but can we talk about the copy generation? Because placeholder text is usually just lorem ipsum or insert text here, and we like to avoid that. Now you can generate actual relevant copy that makes your designs feel more real during presentations. Now let's talk about some standalone tools that solve specific problems that a lot of us deal with. A problem for me, typography pairing. Not my personal favorite, but I feel like a lot of us can get stuck there, right? You find one font you love and then you're scrolling through all these options trying to find a font that works with it. Font Joy takes that guesswork out. You put in one font and it suggests pairings that actually make sense. I'm not saying it's perfect every time, but it's way better than my trial and error method was. Look at some of these combinations. They understand contrast and hierarchy in ways that honestly taught me some things about why certain pairings work. And while we're on the topic of things that used to take me forever, color palettes. Chroma is this AI tool that learns your color preferences and generates palettes based on what you actually like, not just what's trending. After using Chroma for a while, it's already gotten used to some colors that I'm drawn to, and now when I need a palette, it gives me options that feel like something I would have chosen on my own, but way faster. Of course, your choices will vary from project to project, but this definitely gives you a really good starting point. It's like having a color-savvy friend who knows your taste. This selection of tools creates a well-rounded kit for designers to use as assistants, not replacements. The creative thinking, the problem solving, the understanding of what your client actually needs is still all you, but these will save you lots of time. I suggest not trying to integrate everything at once. Pick one tool, get comfortable with it, see how it fits into your workflow, then maybe add something else. And honestly, the first result AI gives you is rarely your final answer, it's a starting point. You still need to refine it, make it yours, and make it right for the project, but the combination of your skills and this technology can make you a beast. 
I'm curious to know if you're already using any of these or if there are any you're interested in trying, let me know in the comments. And if this video has helped you streamline your design process in any way, make sure you give it a like and subscribe for more practical design content.